Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Forestown, Pennsylvania, and our video version of worship on this fourth Sunday of Easter. I am Pastor Bill DeHass, Interim Pastor of the Congregation. I'm glad you can join us for this time of worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, the fourth chapter. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel, that this man standing before you in good health, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace be to you from our risen Lord Jesus. Amen. I feel like I should start the sermon like a TV show with a continuing plot. Previously, in the book of Acts, Peter and John had encountered a man who was unable to walk from birth. After getting him to look at them, they told him that in the name of Jesus he was healed, and he got up and walked. This led a large crowd to gather around Peter and John, where Peter then told them about the power of the risen Lord Jesus to bring life and wholeness to people. Even though they were ignorant of wishing Jesus to be crucified, God was offering them a new direction. God had raised Jesus from death and was in the process of restoring the whole creation. Meanwhile, leaders of the temple came to Peter and John. They were annoyed that the two were proclaiming the resurrection. So they had Peter and John arrested and held in custody till the next morning. And this is where we begin today. Is it not interesting how people can come away with different takes on events that they witness? This is especially true when we witness something and that meaning of the event is so clear to us, but not to others. Sometimes we interpret events that are in accord with our view of the world and the way things must be. And that is especially true when events might challenge or threaten our views or even our power and ourselves. That seems to be the situation in Acts 3 and 4. All of the action in chapter 3 and thus far in chapter 4 spring from the healing of a man who was lame from birth. The man's reaction was joy. He got up and he not only walked, but he started leaping around and praising God. The crowd who gathered was in awe of what happened, but didn't know what to make of it. They thought Peter and John were some wonder workers. We heard about that last week. Then there are the religious leaders. These are the same cohort 
that were threatened by the ministry and the popularity of Jesus of Nazareth. He had been teaching differently than them. Like the prophets of old, Jesus spoke truth to power, and they did not take to it. At points just before Jesus was crucified, those leaders seemed to be losing their grip on the hold over the temple and the people. So they were all too happy to see Jesus done away with. And now here are his followers who are not only proclaiming the resurrection, but also healing in the name of the risen one. It was too much. Additionally, it is not just Peter and John, but also the fact that through their proclamation, the number of those coming to faith in the risen Jesus was increasing rapidly. In the verse, um, in the verse our reading begins with today, we're told that the number of those who heard the proclamation of the apostles and believed was around 5,000. So the religious leaders used what power they had and arrested Peter and John and had them held overnight. And then they would interrogate them the next morning. Now, let me say again, the fact that some people in first century Palestine had a run-in with Jesus does not vilify an entire group of people, especially here, the Jewish people. That is not only an unjust, it is evil. Yes, Jesus did have opposition, but by a small group that held power in Jerusalem and over the workings of the temple. They had power and authority, but so did Jesus. They clashed. The very thing asked of Peter and John in today's reading was also asked of Jesus. Where did you get your power and by what authority did you do this? Last week, Peter simply notes that the health of the man who was healed came by the power of Jesus and not from Peter and John. Jesus was crucified, but God raised him from the dead to be Lord, and it is Jesus that has the power and authority. However, in this situation with these religious leaders, Peter adds a verse from Psalm 118 with a couple of edits. Peter says, the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, it has become the cornerstone. This little proverb about the cornerstone is from Psalm 118. That psalm seems to have its origin uh, as a praise to God for some victory that was won by Israel centuries before Jesus. The reference to the rejected stone becoming the cornerstone was most likely an allusion to the fact that Israel was seen as small and insignificant. But by the power of God, it had become a mighty people and therefore a cornerstone. And a cornerstone, of course, is the biggest and most important stone on which uh, buildings rest. In the same way, Peter applies this to Jesus, the very one who was seen by many as a fraud and was done away with, is the one who is the bedrock of all things. Peter adds a small dig in uh, Psalm 118. Uh, Psalm 118 refers to a general uh, which the builders rejected, but Peter says, you builders rejected. I do believe that Psalm 118 does apply to Jesus, and in a very real way also to all of those who bear the name of Jesus, even now in this time and this place. Apart from Jesus, none of us are terribly significant. And even those of great status, though in, uh, those who are of great status uh, try to live on that status, though in truth they are really standing on shifting sand. However, in Jesus and through his power, 
through his death and resurrection, through his call to you and me, and by his authority and power, he makes us who we are, children of God. And even if we are rejected in the world, we are built on the cornerstone that will last. That is the Easter promise, signed, sealed, and delivered by Jesus himself. You and I are saved by no other name, but by the name of Jesus, we are saved. Amen. On this fourth Sunday of Easter, let us pray for the church, the earth, and all in any need. God of goodness and mercy, we pray for the church, that bishops, pastors, and deacons be upheld in their tasks as shepherds of your flock and that congregations persevere in their ministries of nurture of the young and care for the aging. We pray for members of other world religions that there may be an end to interreligious strife, that Sikhs be comforted in their sorrow, and that during Ramadan, Muslims be strengthened for lives of prayer and service. We pray for the earth, that green pastures and clear waters be provided for herds and flocks, those raised for human use and those living wild, that farm fields be saved from storm or drought. We pray for the nations of the earth, the governments, that governments cease aggression against their neighbors, that peace come to Afghanistan, Syria, Myanmar, and that China, Russia, and the United States coexist in accord with each other. We pray for justice in our land, that our criminal justice system continue to be reformed, and that ethnic and economic prejudices cease their hold, hold on people, and that there be peace in our streets. We pray for those who are hungry, the unemployed, the underemployed, those living in refugee camps or on our streets, the migrants seeking a better life, that they may be fed. We pray for those who are sick or suffering, for those stricken with the coronavirus, especially in India and Brazil, for the children who have known continual sorrow, and for those that we here name before you. We pray finally for ourselves that you will receive the petitions of our hearts. We praise you for all the sheep of your fold, each lamb of your own flock. Especially today, we thank you for the evangelist Mark and for his gospel book of faith. Bring us with all the saints to dwell in your house forever. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May our glorious God grant us a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.